In this video, we will learn about AWS command line interface. AWS command line interface is a CLI tool which lets you manage your AWS services by running commands. If you haven't checked out the other videos, make sure to check it out and also subscribe to CloudChamp. Learning AWS CLI is important for all cloud and DevOps engineers. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's go. Okay, I'm here in my AWS management console. And if I want to create something in this, let's say an EC2 instance, I have to first start with searching the service. Once I search for the service, I will then need to click on the buttons, put the configuration of the server I want to create. So like what is the name of the server, what is the AMI instance type and everything else. Once I put that, then I need to click on launch instance and it will create a server for me. This is fine for a single server, but what if you want to create servers, databases, storage and multiple AWS services? or maybe you want to automate all of this through a script, then you cannot use your console. You will have to use something known as CLI or command line interface such as AWS CLI. So in this video, I will teach you what is AWS CLI, how to use AWS CLI, what can you do with it, how do you connect your AWS account with your CLI and lot more. I also have this AWS CLI command cheat sheet, which includes all the important commands you need to know as a DevOps engineer to manage your AWS services using the CLI. And if you want me to share this with you, comment down AWS CLI cheat sheet in the comment section. Now with that being said, let's start with learning AWS CLI. So what is AWS CLI? AWS CLI is a tool which lets you manage your AWS services using a command. For example, if I show you, this is my terminal. I'm using Ubuntu right now. AWS CLI works with Ubuntu. It also works with Windows, Mac OS, so you can see it's you can install AWS CLI on any operating system. I have AWS CLI already installed. So if I show you that, I can run AWS dash dash version and my AWS CLI is installed. I have installed AWS CLI version two and you should also be installing AWS CLI version two, which is the new one. AWS also has version one CLI, but we are not going to be using that. You should be installing AWS CLI version two. Now, if I want to check what are the different IAM users present in my account, we have learned about IAM in the previous section and we could create any IAM user through the console, but you can also do it easily through your CLI and I will show you that in this video. So if I want to check all the users in my account, I can do AWS IAM list users and this will tell me the list of the users in my account. So I have Alex, I have Brian that I created yesterday. I also have intern and Rajesh user here. So this is how you can use AWS commands through AWS CLI to manage and create services. We will be going through different examples of how to create servers, S3 buckets using AWS CLI. But before you actually go ahead and use AWS CLI, you need to install it. And you can install AWS CLI from this page here. I will put this link in the description or else you can simply search for AWS CLI download and you will be taken to this AWS page or AWS documentation where you can follow steps to install AWS CLI either in Linux, Mac OS or Windows. I am using Linux, so I have ran these commands to install AWS CLI in my Ubuntu machine. If you are using Windows, you can follow the same steps of mentioned here to install AWS CLI in your machine and you can start using AWS CLI right in your command prompt or PowerShell. Once you have installed AWS CLI, how will you connect it with your AWS account? So this is again a very important thing. How will the CLI know which account to create services on or which account to list the users from? And that is where you will require to run AWS configure command. So AWS configure command is similar to login or sign that you do with your AWS management console. So when you log in, you put your username and password. But if I run AWS configure command here in my terminal, if I run AWS configure command here, it is not going to ask me to put the username and password. Instead, it will ask me to put the access key and secret access key. Access key here is similar to username and secret access key here is similar to password. So where can you get this access key and secret access key? This AWS configure command is also required when you work with other DevOps tools like Terraform, Jenkins, Ansible. You will have to connect your Terraform with your AWS account and you do this using the AWS configure command. So how do you get these keys? You can get these keys from the IAM dashboard. So in the previous video, we have learned what is IAM service, how to create IAM users and how do you uh, manage them. So to create the keys, you need to click on the name of the user. You can create keys either for your root user or for your IAM user. Make sure you have enough permissions that you want to do through CLI. What do I mean by this? 
let's say you want to create an S3 bucket through CLI, you should be using the keys from the user who has access to S3. If you don't have permissions attached for S3, you cannot create it through CLI. If you have the permission, click on the name here and go to security credentials. This will take you back to IAM dashboard where you can create your keys. So I'm back in my IAM service. And if you scroll down, you can see access keys here. So use access keys to send programmatic calls to AWS from AWS CLI, AWS tools for PowerShell, SDKs, direct AWS API calls, and lot more. As I have already mentioned, you can manage AWS through your console or your CLI or programming languages, anything. But if you want to manage it through CLI or programming languages, you will have to create an access key. So I can click on create access keys and this will go ahead and create access keys for me. At times you can have two access keys only and this is my access key, this is my secret access key. Make sure you never share your access keys or secret access keys with anyone because they are very, very confidential. If someone has your access keys or secret access keys, they can create uh, instances or they can create storage databases that can cost you money. So I will show you what happens if you, I will show you what you can do if your secret access keys or access keys are exposed. But let me first show you how to connect your account. <clears throat> so this is the command AWS configure. If I run AWS configure command, as I've already entered my keys, I get this as an output. For you, it might be none because there's no key added previously. So I'm going to put my access keys here and I'm exposing it in front of you in this video, which is fine because I'm going to delete the keys. This is my secret access keys. If you want, you can use it, but it's not going to work because I'm going to delete it. So this is my access key. This is my secret access key. And this is the region. If you remember the global infrastructure video in this AWS playlist, we know that we can call North Virginia also as US East 1, Ohio as US East 2. So I'm saying I want to connect to my CLI on North Virginia, which is US East 1. So I'm going to press enter. So it takes the same value and the default output format is going to be JSON. Once you do this, your CLI is now connected to AWS and you can start working with CLI. You can also start working with Terraform, Ansible or any CLI tools. So let's say I want to check all the buckets in my account. If you remember in the IAM video, we have created a bucket. So let's see if we can see that from our CLI or not. So we can actually see that here. Now let's try out some more examples. Let's say I want to create an S3 bucket. If you want to create it in the console, you need to go and then choose S3, click on create bucket, put the name configuration and you create it. Whereas using CLI, I'm just going to run a command AWS S3 MB, which is a MIG bucket. S3 URI, which is going to be this, and then the name of your bucket. Let's say my bucket cloud champ 2024. Once I do this, I will get an output. If the name is valid, I get this output, which means the bucket is created. And I can refresh you to show that the bucket is indeed here. So this is how easy it is to create resources in AWS using AWS CLI. Oftentimes you will not have access to the console, so you will as a DevOps engineer, you might get access only to CLI. So you will need to know how to use CLI, what are different commands to manage AWS. Let's say you don't know what is the command to create a bucket, or let's say you don't know what is the command to create EC2 or anything. You can simply use the help option. Let's say I want to get all the commands for S3. I'll say AWS S3 and help. This will give me the list of the commands, also explaining me what it does. So I can see this is what it wants you, which is going to be the S3 colon colon URI the name of the bucket and then which folder do you want to put the data or which folder do you want to get the data for. Next, you can also see these are all the existing commands, cp command, which is to copy an object from your local machine to the bucket. You can also do that, which makes it so, so easier. So when you have large files in your local machine and you want to move it to S3 bucket, you can simply use cp, which can directly move your objects from local machine to the S3 bucket. I will be explaining you all of that in the S3 domain or S3 video. So don't worry about it if you don't understand much. These are all the commands you can use. Uh, and this is the description. So if any time you don't know how to use S3 uh, with the CLI, you can run the help command. So now we know how you can use AWS CLI to create services in the cloud. I've also mentioned how you can use AWS CLI to create scripts and automate it. To show you an example, let me create a script which is going to create an IAM user and also save the details of this user inside a file in my local machine. So to create an IAM user, I've already to taught you how to create an IAM user in the previous section, but I'm going to show you how you can do it through the AWS CLI here. So I'm going to create a script now. 
So let's create a script named as create user dot sh. Inside this file, I'm going to paste my script here, and let me explain you this script before I run it. So this is a bash script. I am specifying the username, which is a variable to add the username. It is going to be admin user today state or something. And then the policy I want to attach to this user is going to be administrator access, just for an example. Then it will show me a message saying creating IAM user, and in the background it is going to run this command, which is to create a user with the username inside this variable. Next, it is going to attach the policy, which is the admin policy using this command IAM attach policy. Once the policy is attached, it is going to create access keys for the user, and then store this access key inside a file named as uh, this. So we are going to be creating the user, also attaching the policy, creating access keys, and saving the access key files inside this credential files. So let's actually run this. So I'm going to close and save this. Give this file executing permission. So I'll say chmod777 and create user.sh. Let's try to run this. And you should be able to see that this will create a user with the username this. Now the user is created. It is attaching a policy. It is now creating a keys, and the keys are stored inside this file. So if I show you this file, let's cat it, and you can see the user is created and the keys are also stored. So this is how you can automate everything. If I was to do it through the console, it would take me around five to ten minutes. But using CLI, it just took me a minute. So you can see now the user is also created, and this is the same user that we created through our terminal here. So this is an example of how you can use AWS CLI for your DevOps work. Now that you know how to use AWS CLI commands to create and manage services in AWS, let me explain you the benefits of using AWS CLI as a DevOps engineer. The first benefit is automation and scripting. Using CLI, you can write down scripts, putting all the AWS commands, and which can help you with deployment of EC2 instance, S3 buckets, IAM users, everything with just a single script. So it will help you faster execution of tasks compared to using the AWS Management Console. Next is cross-platform consistency. As AWS CLI can work with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, you can use the same commands in different OS. So consistent environment management across different operating systems. Next, AWS CLI can also integrate with your CI/CD pipelines. So in your CI/CD pipeline files, you can mention CLI commands to do operations on AWS or to deploy code to AWS. You can also save cost using AWS CLI. How can you save cost? So you can create scripts to shut down the instances or the RDS databases. When it is not in use, using the cron jobs, so you can optimize resource usage and also lower your expenses. Not just this, AWS CLI can also work with DevOps tools like Terraform, Jenkins, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, which are all mentioned here. I have the list of CLI commands that is used most by DevOps engineers. So here is a comprehensive cheat sheet specifically tailored for DevOps tasks, which includes creation of S3 bucket, EC2 instances, Kubernetes cluster, and everything else. If you want me to share this with you, please comment AWS CLI cheat sheet. One thing to remember about AWS CLI as a DevOps engineer is when you run your AWS configure command and you put your keys, these keys are stored inside your local machine in the folder which is .aws. So if I show you that folder which is .aws, you can see there are two folders inside this config and credential. If I do cat credential command dot slash AWS credentials. You can see the keys are stored here, and this is why you are not supposed to use AWS Configure when giving access to different services. Instead, you should be using AWS IAM role. So I mentioned this in the previous IAM service on why you should be using IAM role instead of using IAM keys because the keys are stored inside this folder, and anyone who has access to your server can also get access to your keys. So make sure you always use IAM role when you want to give access to different services. When it is a physical user, then you can create IAM user for them. Now my keys are exposed, and you should never expose or share your keys. If your keys are shared, you can just go and delete it. So just do the same thing, which is going to security credentials, and you will be taken to the same IAM page where you created your keys. So I'm going to go here, and I can see this is the key that I created 39 minutes ago. It was last used 30 minutes ago. So I'm going to click on actions, and then click on delete. But to delete, you need to put the access key here. I'm going to first deactivate it. Before I delete, I need to deactivate it. Once it is deactivated, I'm then going to click on delete option, and this will delete it. So once it is deleted, you can always create a new key pair. Uh, so no problem, even if you delete a key, you can always create a new one. These keys are also used when you work with Jenkins. 
So if you have done my Netflix DevSecOps project, you might have seen that I added my access keys and secret access keys inside Jenkins credential. Similarly, when you work with Terraform, you also need to put the keys. So if I show you Terraform AWS provider, this is the AWS provider for Terraform. And if you scroll down, you can see this is where you need to put your access keys and secret access key. Although this is not a best practice, but still you will require keys when you want to connect Terraform with your AWS. And this is how you create the keys. So we have understood what is AWS CLI. How do you connect your CLI with your account? How do you run different commands? How to create scripts and automate repetitive tasks in your AWS? So this video was just a quick overview of what is AWS CLI and how do you use it in your DevOps workflow. As a task, I request you to create an IAM user using AWS CLI just to check your knowledge. If you face any issues in installing or configuring AWS CLI, let me know in the comment section. And in the next video, we are going to be learning about AWS EC2, which is Elastic Compute Cloud on how to create servers using AWS EC2. So see you in the next video.